Ever wondered why a massive ship doesn't sink, but a small pebble does? It's a question that might keep you up at night, or maybe we're just overly curious. Regardless, it's a fascinating phenomenon that we observe every day. You see, in our daily lives, we've been conditioned to think that heavy things sink. Drop a stone into a pond and it plummets to the bottom, no questions asked. But then, you see these colossal ships, massive structures of steel and iron, weighing thousands of tons, effortlessly floating on the surface of the water. It seems to contradict everything we think we know about weight and sinking. It's like watching an elephant float on a lily pad. It just doesn't seem to add up, does it? So why is it that a heavy hunk of metal like a ship manages to stay afloat? Let's dive into the science behind it. The answer to our burning question lies in a principle called buoyancy. Now what is buoyancy, you may ask? Picture a rubber duck bobbing in your bathwater. It floats because it's buoyant. But what's the science behind it? Well, buoyancy is a force exerted by a fluid, like water or air, that opposes an object's weight. When an object is submerged in a fluid, it experiences an upward force that we call buoyancy. This force is the reason you feel lighter when you're swimming, and why that rubber duck doesn't sink to the bottom of your tub. To understand it further, let's consider a cube. When this cube is placed in water, it displaces a certain amount of the water, making room for itself. The water pushes back, trying to reclaim its space, creating an upward force on the cube. This is buoyancy in action. Now, the key to understanding why massive ships float lies in Archimedes' principle. Named after the ancient Greek mathematician and inventor, it states that the buoyant force acting on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object. Imagine a bathtub filled to the brim. If you were to step into that tub, the water level would rise and spill over the edges. The water that spills out is equal to the volume of your body that's submerged in the tub. This displaced water is directly related to the buoyant force that keeps you afloat. So, when a gigantic ship is placed in the ocean, it displaces a massive volume of water, creating a large buoyant force. Even though the ship is incredibly heavy, the displaced water creates enough upward force to balance the ship's weight. In essence, a ship doesn't sink because it's large, it floats because it displaces a large volume of water. The weight of this displaced water is equal to or greater than the weight of the ship, providing the buoyant force that keeps the ship afloat. So, it's not about how heavy an object is, but about how much water it can push out of the way. That's the key. Now you might be wondering, how does a ship displace water? That's where our friend displacement steps in. Picture this, a ship plunges into the water, elbowing aside a volume of water equal to its own mass, making room for itself. That's displacement in action. This principle is vital to ship design. Engineers craft the hull, the ship's bottom part, to be wide and deep enough to displace a large volume of water. This displacement creates a buoyant force that counteracts the ship's weight. Larger ships, like cruise ships and tankers, are designed to displace massive volumes of water, compensating for their colossal weight. It's a delicate balancing act, where the weight of the water displaced must be equal to the weight of the ship. If the ship is too heavy, it won't displace enough water and will sink. If it's too light, it will sit high in the water and be unstable. So, the shape and design of a ship play a crucial role in keeping it afloat by maximizing displacement. So there you have it, the mystery unraveled. We've dipped our toes into the world of marine physics, exploring why behemoths of steel like cruise ships and tankers don't sink. It's all down to two key principles, buoyancy and displacement. Remember how we talked about buoyancy? That's the force that helps to keep the ship afloat. It's all about the battle between the weight of the water and the weight of the ship. And when the ship is lighter than the water it displaces, ta-da! it floats. Then we dove into the concept of displacement. The ship's hull design plays a crucial role here, spreading the weight of the ship over a larger area, increasing the amount of water displaced, and thus increasing buoyancy. So next time when you see a massive ship, remember it's not about the weight, it's all about the displacement. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights. Until next time, keep your curiosity afloat.